Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look at a new Rails feature called InPart Maps. For the longest time, I have been postponing a deep dive into Webpack and other tools like that. I even bought a course on Webpack, but never watched it. Because I secretly hated all that complexity, and I still do. I'm not even sure if there's anybody who likes that stuff, but the fact is that it was necessary to make third-party JavaScript libraries work well together. I'd much rather write code than spend my time tweaking that side of the toolchain, but sometimes that's unavoidable. With the release of Rails 7, import maps are the default way of loading third-party JavaScript libraries, which means you can remove Webpack and Node.js from your project. This is all possible because HTTP2 is now available everywhere, and you no longer pay a large penalty for sending many small files instead of a big file. So there's no need for bundling anymore. We can finally go back to how things were before the crazy and just use the libraries we want without having to spend ages in configuration hell. By the way, if you're interested in learning Rails, I'm making a new Rails course which will cover everything you need to know about it, including the new features introduced in Rails 7. Another benefit of using multiple files over one big file is caching. Whenever you change one module, you don't have to expire everything and force the browser to reload the entire bundle. You can expire just the file you've changed. So, what is this import map thing? It's a new feature which allows JavaScript modules to be imported by referencing them through their bare module specifiers, which are just logical names that point to file locations. The location could be an absolute path, a relative one, or an HTTP path. So in this example, we're defining an import map which maps my mod to an absolute path where we can find the module. And the path is relative to the web root, so this file is in the public folder. And once we have that import map defined, we can import the module in our JavaScript code by using the name we've defined for it. If we take a look at the JavaScript console, we can see that the JavaScript code inside the module has been picked up. And what if we want to use a library like jQuery? Well, we would import it like this, but then to create the import map for it, we'll run the import map pin command. I'm running a brand new Rails 7 project which installs import maps by default. But just in case you don't have it, you can install the import map Rails gem and run the install script to get it configured. Okay, so this pin command adds the library and any dependencies to the config import map.rb file. And you can also remove the library by using the unpin command. Just remember to restart the server after unpinning. But note that the location for the jQuery library is not the official one, it's a pre-compiled distribution at a CDN location. And this is a CDN that gives you access to the entire NPM catalog via import maps without you having to use Node.js to compile packages yourself. You can pick a different CDN if you don't like the default by using the dash dash from flag when pinning. And you can also specify the environment you want for packages with separate production and development builds by using the dash dash n flag. You can even skip the CDNs altogether and avoid the SSL handshakes by downloading the packages to your vendor JavaScript folder with the download flag. Note that in order to load all the module dependencies, the browser needs to wait for the module to be loaded before it knows what its dependencies are, and then it goes ahead and loads them. This can create a waterfall effect where the browser has to load one file after the other before it can get to the deepest nested import. But fortunately, pinned modules can be preloaded by appending the preload true flag to the pin so that the browser knows about all the files ahead of time and can keep the connection busy. So by adding the library to our import map.rb file, we're configuring how the final import map gets generated. And we can take a look at the generated JSON code by running the import map JSON command. This will be added to the head section of the layout through the JavaScript import map tags helper. This helper generates the import map script tag as the ES module shims for import map support in browsers that don't currently support it, and it imports the application JavaScript as the entry point for the rest of our JavaScript code. So this setup works great, except it's not a complete replacement for your bundler or transpiler, at least not yet. Things like dead code elimination, JSX, TypeScript, and CSS compilation still require a bundler or a transpiler. And for those cases, you can use the JS Bundling Rails gem to bundle your JavaScript and hand it over to the asset pipeline. It supports ESBuild, RollUpJS, and Webpack. The same goes for CSS. If you need any kind of compilation before you hand off your CSS to the asset pipeline, you can use a CSS bundler for that. A CSS Bundling Rails gem uses Node.js to do the CSS bundling, and the Tailwind CSS Rails gem uses the standalone executable 
that Tailwind CSS provides to do the CSS bundling. So I hope this gave you a better understanding of how import maps work with Rails 7. Bye!